Castles were not always huge, fantastical structures like you see on TV. They were often just one room, almost like a tower. But if you had the money, you could expand, adding more and more rooms with specific functions. Some of these rooms, well, they had some nasty stuff happening inside. I'm Adam Andrews, and this is the top 10 unholy rooms in medieval castles. Number 10. The kitchen. Now that you've got your appetite, let's talk about the kitchen. Major kitchens of the castle usually had to deal with providing at least two meals for several hundred people every day. As you can imagine, this is where the work would be put in. By a large staff too, usually in the hundreds. So you're sweaty from working and surrounded by a bunch of other blokes. Sounds pretty awful. But you didn't take into account the amount of heat. The guidelines on how to make enough food for a two day banquet include the chief cook having to at least have 1,000 cartloads of good dry firewood and a large barn full of coal to keep the fires going. It's spicy in the kitchen, let me tell you. Number nine, the main hall. The idea of a standing army wasn't exactly a thing during the medieval period. So what you would have is your knights or castle soldiers. And unless there was a barracks, the main hall would often convert to have a bunch of cots in it where these soldiers would sleep. It could also be where your guests might stay, and even your servants if you didn't have a room for either of them. And then it became your dining room. It was also your party room, and your courtroom. It was honestly a pretty versatile room. So much room for activity. You could probably imagine the amount of tomfoolery that happened here though. A large group of sweaty men and women after a feast, and they don't have to walk home because they are staying the night. Nice. Number eight, the pooper. The title says unholy, but this room's main purpose is to have a hole. A hole for people to sit their little keisters down on and drop the kids off. Sometimes down a nice long shaft through the castle that went straight to the cesspit or to the moat. If the moat was a room, I'd probably include it on this list because, yikes. A toilet isn't something you'd actually find in most medieval castles. There are easier places to do your business outside. The garter robe is basically a tiny little closet sized room with a hole in it for this sole purpose. But they were also used for storage, like when you had visitors. You gotta put their coats and cloaks somewhere. Why not next to where Steve is trying to go potty? Number seven, dovecoats. You know when you walk down the street and a white colored excrement falls on you from above and you look up to see a pigeon just looking down on you as if it owns your whole existence? Imagine that, times like two and a half thousand in a circular tower and you've got a dove coat. These structures actually showed off status and wealth as only the lords were legally allowed to have them. Doves and pigeons proved to be an excellent source of food with their meat and eggs. Their feathers were also valuable, and yes, even their droppings found use back in the day. Doves even had religious value, being associated with the Holy Spirit. Pigeons, on the other hand, are a menace to society and need to be stopped at all costs. Thank you for listening to my PSA. Gotcha, you little rascal. You were gonna keep watching this video without slapping that like and subscribe button, weren't you? <sighs> That's fine. I guess you can do that. But gee, we would really all appreciate it if you just gave those buttons a little poke and then we can poke back with more of these videos. Deal? All right, moving on. Number six, the buttery. I can't believe it's not butter. Well, believe it, sister. This has nothing to do with butter. No, in fact, the name actually comes from beer butts, otherwise known as barrels. The room itself was located pretty close to the main hall, where yeomen would serve beer to the people who were too low in the ladder to be allowed to have wine. And it was usually connected to the beer cellar down below. How is this unholy? Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never done a single holy thing after a few beers. Number five, bed chambers. Do I need to say more? Actually, yes. See, while the bed chamber was the place where the deed was done, those lucky servants that were allowed to actually stay in this room with their lords and ladies, often slept on the floor wrapped in blankets and soaking up the heat of the fireplace. The castle itself usually had a cold dampness about it, which sounds lovely. So there were often tapestries hanging on the walls to counteract this. The servants on the floor thing makes me think of when you had like sleepovers and you had to tiptoe through all your friends sleeping on the ground to leave the room. <laughs> Number four, gatehouses. Now for a place with the least amount of holes. Actually, it, it probably had the most. The gatehouse was probably the most fortified structure in the castle. The holes we have here were for the sole purpose of hurling or shooting projectiles. Some were for traps and obstacles. 
The gatehouse was a house for the main weak spot of the castle, the front gate. And as such, it had to be the most defendable part of said castle. It was also usually the most lavish and ornate part of the castle. If you're inviting Lord Reginald from across the way to your castle, you want him walking through that front door thinking, hey, this guy could absolutely defend against me, but also he has impeccable taste. Number three, the dungeon. You knew this was gonna be here. Don't pretend to be surprised. Well, guess what? It ain't as common as you might think. And it wasn't always a deep, dank cellar in the bottom of the castle. It actually started off as a prison in the tippy top of the tallest, safest tower. Apparently, keeping people in cells wasn't actually commonplace at first. You probably just, you know. But hey, when they did have dungeons, then yeah, they were pretty grim. They were always put in the coldest, darkest, most moist part of the castle. And they were usually just prisons. Number two, oubliette. Bouncing off the dungeon is a much smaller dungeon and hey, another hole. Yep, this one is kind of worse than a latrine though. You see, this is a hole that they would actually put people in. Imagine being put in a hole in the ground where it was too small for you to actually sit down, with a trap door on top, too high to reach. That's an oubliette. The word oubliette is actually from the French word to forget, which is what they do. They'd put you in this hole and then forget about you to die. Lovely, right? Number one, torture rooms. Here we are. Now how many of you weirdos came here for this one? This room is separate from the dungeons usually, not always, but it was at least not very far. Still gotta keep your prisoners cold and dark as you make them squeal for the end, right? Wow, that was dark. This was the room where you'd keep all your favorite tools of the pain trade. Stretched, hung by your ankles, fire, tools of all kind. There were trap doors in some torture rooms too that would lead to dungeons or pools of water. Some torture rooms, like those during the Inquisition, had even thicker walls to keep the screams in. <sighs> some of these torture rooms weren't used as often as you think though, as merely having a torture room was enough to get prisoners to give you what you wanted. All right, can we like move on now, please? Okay. Since it's my first solo rodeo, I figured I would respond to some comments from our last time together. These are from top 10 dishonorable families in history. First one comes from Kimberly Patton. Hey Adam, welcome to Bumblebee. This is the first video I've seen you in. You are a great addition to the great team. I think we should call you Double A. Again, welcome. This is a superb channel and the jokes with you and Ched are awesome. He's right though, you are too cute. Double A, yeah. Haven't heard that one before. Okay, all right, yeah. No, seriously though, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And stop calling me cute and blushing. Maggie Owen says, good stuff guys. I was a little sus about the new guy, but he proved me wrong. Damn straight, don't forget it. Keep watching my videos, they're okay, I guess. <laughs> Delane Bloom said, lol, you two are great. The two Andrews or more tacky, the double A twins. You two did a great job. I never laughed so much at the thought of some really awful criminals. Nice job, Big Chet and Andrew. This, by the way, was the first time that I ever saw Andrew. <laughs> you are a great new addition, thank you both. If Andrew was the new addition, he would be great, but He's not, it's me, Adam. This is awkward, isn't it? Um... <laughs> no, but thank you, I really appreciate it. All right, bees, that's the list I got for you. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm Adam Andrews, you can find me on Instagram down below. You've been watching Bumblebee, and until next time, toodles. If you're inviting Roar,